It may not look like it, but I was born and raised in Indonesia. My parents are from California and wanted to live an interesting and different life. They're teachers and travelers, so I'm very fortunate to grow up with a unique perspective. Here's a picture of my dad showing me the beautiful ocean in Bali when I was a child. Look how amazing it is. And I've been able to witness firsthand the beauty that Indonesia offers the world. The rainforests, the volcanoes, the rice fields, the lands, the animals, the food, the people. I love Indonesia with all of my heart. That's why I'm going to fight for her. Because I'm afraid of the changes I see happening before our eyes. And for the last seven years, our company, Indosol, has been producing shoes and sandals out of discarded tires because we recognize that there's no solution globally for the 1.5 billion tires that are discarded each year. And in Indonesia, we found that 60% of these tires are being burned as a cheap source of fuel in small factories. Even worse, we found that this was considered okay and even encouraged. The thought of toxic smoke going into the air that we breathe, and the toxic oils going into the ground, really started to bother me. And in Bali, I swam with garbage as I went surfing. And plastics, syringes, styrofoam have all become my personal obstacle course as I run with my dogs on the beach. I started thinking about how fast the world is moving and how much we are consuming. And I wondered if there was a solution. So I'm going to share some of my thoughts with you today and hope by the end of my talk you're thinking about some of these things as well. I'm going to throw out a bunch of what ifs, some which are happening already and some which might not be. But the main thing I came here to talk to you about today is a new industry called the secondary resource market, where we replace the resources we're taking from Earth with the waste sitting in landfills. I like to refer to it as modern day mining. And as I mentioned earlier, we've been working with tires. And if you break down a tire, you'll get oil, rubber, steel, all valuable commodities on their own. We realize that there's tons of other materials sitting in landfills waiting to be made into new, into new products, like our friends Boreo, who are taking discarded fishing nets, turning them into plastic pellets, and making new products like skateboards, sunglass frames, and tons of other plastic components. The potential is massive. So what if? What if we started learning? Learning about where our products are made and how they are made. Learning that plastics are made from oil, tires are made from rubber trees, and precious metals are mined out of mountains. Every day, we're taking resources from the earth, and it's time we take less. So what if we started doing things differently? Let's replace the resources we're taking from the earth with the waste sitting in landfills. Take deforestation, for example. Every day, we're cutting down rainforest land and replacing it with monoculture tree plantations, plantations like rubber tree plantations, rubber tree plantations to produce new rubber. Now, if we were able to replace that new rubber with recycled rubber we get from tires or other discarded rubber items, we can start limiting this, this deforestation. Now, this may seem like a stretch, but if you apply this to the wood industry and the paper industry, the furniture industry, we can really start making a difference and allow our, our trees and our forests to do what they do best, create biodiversity and the oxygen that we all breathe. Let's start looking at waste as a resource with a big dollar signs on it. Every day, we're cutting down trees. Let's stop. Let's stop mining the mountains. Let's stop extracting the oil. Let's use what we already have. Here's a big idea, and this is how we do this. Let's set up factories next to landfills and call them material processing plants. This will make it easy and efficient to process our waste. Everyday items that we throw away, like clothing waste, electronic waste, food, plastic, metals, glass, can all be processed into new materials, new commodities to be sold by kilogram, pound, liter, meter, ounce, any weight, length, or volume. And what if these commodities were sold on Wall Street? Big businesses might start to take notice and start investing in research and development. Their material, their material gain would benefit mankind and the planet. We can start basing our buying decisions on products that hold the most value for the world. If we start learning about where our products are made and how they are made, 
we can start making the issues that are important to us known with the money that we spend. Like my business partner, Kyle, who's wearing or accompanied by products made from waste, product made, products made from the materials from the secondary resource market. It's like saying no to conflict diamonds, only now we're basing our buying decisions on products that hold the most value for the earth, and saying no to items like plastic straws, plastic bags, and styrofoam takeout containers. And what if the village, town, or city that you live in started thinking this way, and governments started investing in these ideas? And what if the examples are already out there? We just need to notice them, acknowledge them, and adapt them further. Because it's up to us to demand a beautiful world for our children to live in and ensure there's a system in place to make sure that there's a beautiful world for them to live in. So if I can do one thing today, it would, for, it would be for me to ask you, to ask yourself, what if? Thank you. Thank you.